Hey everyone, it's time for some Combat Radio. I'm Ethan Dettenmeyer, and now from some undisclosed location somewhere in the UK is acting legend John Mogridge. John has a hard time walking down the street because of his work in the Star Wars franchise, but he's been a part of many legendary projects, and what we're going to get a sense of today is what it's like to be part of a legendary franchise and what it's like to be Mr. John Mogridge. John, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. So when you... um, get the call from your agent or however it works and you report, did you know the job you were taking on or was it one of those things where you were just going to have to figure it out when you got there? Well, what generally happens is you, you phone, phone the agent in the afternoon, uh, around about four o'clock in the afternoon, you tweak their roughly and they say, oh, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, LG Studios, Empire Strikes Back. That's it. They put the phone down. Mm-hmm. But then you've got to get make your own way there because you've never been there before. Then when you turn up, they decide what you're gonna, what costumes you've got, and then see, by looking at you, see how big you are. They can yeah. really do what they want, and it just worked from there. So, so you check in, and somebody looks you up and down and says, "Rebel pilot or stormtrooper." Pretty much, yeah. I mean, if for example, if they, if you you turn up on the call, they say, right, you, you meet the second assistant director. And he gives you a thing called chip. Well, I've got something you know, that they say that's your daily contract. Right. You go in and then they say, right, now go to wardrobe. You go to wardrobe and say like they've got 10 stormtroopers, 10 this, 10 that. They look at you and think, oh, well, you could be a stormtrooper. And if they've got a costume, you know, you're the right size, they do that and you move on. And then other people say, so it's just a quick turnover. They can't afford to hang about. So you suit up, right? Do you have to go to hair, hair and makeup and all that? They give you your last looks and send you on your way to the set? Not on that one, because most of the time it was, you know, covered in helmets and, and stuff. I mean, Stormtrooper, Snowtrooper, and the Rebel pilot. There was all helmets on, so they don't worry about that. So were you the pilot, were you the pilot first? Uh, started off as a Rebel. Mm-hmm. Then I did the Rebel scene with Carrie Fisher, you know, when she does the briefing. Right. Yeah, there's a snow... I was, I, then I was in a was it snow speeder. Then we went on to storm, snow trooper, and then finished as a snow, uh, storm trooper in the cloud city mm. and the freezing chamber. So that whole Echo Base set that was at the studio, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The offset was but they just built the, that particular set. You know, the whole building. They were still finishing it, uh, and you, you could see that it had just been built. And then George Lucas's team went in there, and they they done. For, Fantastic job. When you walked in there, it was like walking on to a, 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 an aircraft hangar, a spaceship. It's brilliant. Yeah, I had some friends. I had some friends that worked the production side of it, and they said that the set was so large, they had to build an additional hangar to stretch it out. Yeah, it was massive. Because we did the virtually, was, we spent, we did the, the off. I was Rebel, a Snow Trooper. There, it was only when we moved over to the other set on the other studio, on the other sound stages that we did the Stormtrooper. But everything I did was virtually on that set, and it was massive. Yeah. You know, I when I was at Warner Brothers in feature development, I met the director of that, Irving Kirshner, and I remember him being complimentary. He said, you know why people love that movie is the atmosphere. He said the players and the sets, it's like when you go right into that movie, into that ice base, you don't doubt for a second that this situation is real. And he was really complimentary to all the people and all the young actors that kind of got their start rounding out the shots and the sets with their presence. You know, it was very, very nice to hear a director say that. Well, it was a very friendly set. Everybody seemed sort of, I mean, for me, because I was first into it, it's to look at being British, very British. You, you know what I say about you don't like being uh, forward. And I went along there, and everyone's first name in it, even with Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill, it was, that was very friendly. So I think when that atmosphere, it, it rubs off on people, and then it just spreads. And I think that's what made it an happy film for me. Yeah. I mean, you knew what it was, right, on the moment you reported. You knew you were you were tasked with basically Star Wars 2, and the mission is really just don't screw this up. It's already a hit, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I'd already seen it with my brother. We went to see the original film um, at the cinema and uh, loved it. Brilliant film. And then when they said this, it was like, well, I was 19 years old. It was brilliant. So, you know, you, you can't, you can't, I can't explain it. It's very difficult. But when you go along to a film like that and you see Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, the people you'd seen 
in Star Wars are there. And they were so friendly. Yeah. It's brilliant. So give me a moment when you're sitting around like the craft service table, having a cup of tea or coffee or whatever it is you Brits have, and you're sitting there and you realize it kind of hits home like, man, I'm doing a Star Wars movie. Like people are going to look at this for the next four or five decades. This is a great way to make a living. Well, it was. I mean, I, I can't actually see. I, I thought when you're about that, that age, you don't really think about 40 years on. You know, you, you're a bit naive in that respect. But when I was sitting there and you, with all the people I started to get to know, and you think about it, you think, this is fantastic. It is like you watch the film and then suddenly you're in the film. And being in it, it sort of becomes real. I know that sounds weird, but you actually feel like you're, you're part of it now, part of the real story rather than just an actor in it. Brilliant. Do you have a, do you have a moment you remember that was hilariously funny with a blown take or some sort of human moment from the set where you realize that this is the art of movie making? Like maybe the actors couldn't get their lines right or people were ha struggling and you're standing there in a, as a snow trooper or as a pilot, you know, just watching them try to put it together? The, what, the scene with Carrie Fisher was quite a long, complicated scene, the briefing scene. Mm -hmm. uh, it took a long time. I think Carrie at the end was getting a little bit tired. You know, she kept... Because she had to move as well. Because it ain't it's scripted. It ain't just she does what she wants to do. She has to move in a certain direction because of the camera angles and stuff. So she got that. But the, the, I suppose the funniest thing was the snowtroopers when everybody fell over. We were all snowtroopers. First day, they called us over and they said, quick, go and change. Last shot of the day, we're going to do snowtroopers where we burst into off. And uh, it was like in pairs, two, about six in front of Darth Vader, eight behind, all in pairs. And we had to break through this supposed ice uh, cave into the cave and into it off. And the first one or two tripped over. And because we couldn't see, we all tripped over as well. So it was like everybody was falling everywhere. So it was quite, I, I don't think they kept that in, but there's a picture of it on, on, um, on the internet somewhere. Oh, that's a, that's a good picture to have. We're going to have to have you autograph that one for one of our kids' charities.